Okay, we're going to pick up with synthetic division, which uh, which is a little quicker and easier to do than long division, um, and it's a little cleaner. There are some rules for it, though. Um, synthetic division performs division by using the root of the polynomial and the coefficients of your dividend. So what we're going to divide by here, we're going to use these coefficients, 2, 3, negative 8. And then we have to remember that if this is a factor, then the, uh, the zero or the root is going to be positive 2, and that's going to be a really important uh, really important thing that we're doing here. Only works when dividing by a linear factor, so we can on this only will work when we do uh, x to the 1 here, and the, the degree has to be 1 for a linear factor. Um, and the result will always be one less degree than the original. So we'll get to that when we get to the, the actual answer. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start by taking the root of what we're dividing by. So we're going to take the root would be 2, and we kind of place it in this special little box right here. And then we take these coefficients. Now, much like when we did the long division, you have to pay attention to did they skip one of them. So this is x squared, x to the 1, and a constant, so we're fine. So I start with my leading coefficient, uh, leave a little space, and I've got a 3, and then I've got a negative 8. And then we leave a space here because we're going to be doing some writing and put a line underneath. So this is how we start our synthetic division. And we always start by dropping down that first coefficient, which is a 2. And then we take uh, 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 comes up here. And then we have 3 times 4 is 7, and 2 times 7 is 14, and negative 8 and 14 is 6. Now, when we can always section that off, this is the always going to be the remainder. The remainder is 6. And then now we get to the point where it says the result will always be 1 degree less than the original. So I started with degree 2 here, which means my result will be degree 1. So this coefficient is going to be on x to the 1. So I get 2x to the 1, and this is my constant, plus 7. And then I have a remainder of 6, which means I could go plus 6 over x minus 2. Now, if you remember this problem from the long division uh, video or lesson that we just did, which was the last thing that we did, we divided these long division 2x plus 7, and then I got my remainder of 6, so I had my plus 6 over x minus 2. Look how much easier this is to get to that answer. Now again, it's not going to work for every single type of long division problem that we have, but when we're looking for roots or is something a factor, we can use synthetic division and it goes way faster than the long division. It's really all about identifying this root, which in this case is 2, so x minus 2 has a 0 of 2, that's what we use, and then we use these coefficients, and then we have the remainder over here. So this is a very quick way to check to see if we have a factor, because if I got a remainder of zero, then that means we have a factor. Try the next one. The first thing we want to identify is x minus three. Uh, the zero would then be three, so that's how I know put a three there. Cubed, squared, one, and constant. So my lead term is one, and then I have a, a coefficient, negative one coefficient, negative five coefficient, and negative 3 coefficient. Leave a space for our stuff. Some people like to put this in right away. And they know that, that remain this spot right here would have to be the remainder. So we're going to go ahead and always drop down the original. And then we multiply. 3 times 1 is 3. Add them up, I get 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Add them up, I get 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Add them up, I get 0. So I have a remainder of 0. Remainder of 0 tells me that uh, x minus 3 is a factor. It is a factor of the polynomial that we were dividing by. And now when I write out 
what the answer is, this is going to be, this was a cube term, and we always do go one degree less, so this will be x squared plus 2x plus 1. I have no remainder. Now what we're heading towards is uh, in, your, in your homework, they're going to ask you to write it as a uh, uh, collection of product of linear factors. So in this case it would be x minus 3 times x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now some of you might notice that we can factor x squared plus 2x plus 1. In fact, it is x plus 1 squared, if I remember correctly. So now we have it as a collection of factors, and I would know that uh, uh, x minus 3 is going to pass through the graph, and I would know that or at 3, and then I have another 0 of negative 1, and uh, that would be uh, have multiplicity of 2, so it would bounce off. That's from uh, the 2, 3 section. So this would be the, the, the final answer here, since we had a remainder of 0. x minus 3 is a factor. Um, this is an example of where I have a sixth, I have no fifth, I have a fourth, I have no third, I have a second, I have a first, and I have no constant. So you have to pay close attention. Start off with y plus 2 is the factor that we're going to check, or is it a factor, what we're going to divide by. So that means I'm going to use negative 2. And this is a place where uh, students will make a mistake because they'll put positive 2 in there because they see that plus 2. And now I have my sixth, fifth, fourth, third, second, first, constant. So since there was a bunch that didn't have any, I had to put the zeros in there for them. Drop it down, multiply, add them up, 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 remainder. So my first question to you is, is y plus 2 a factor of this thing? And the answer is no, because I got a remainder of 8. And we do need to write out what that answer would look like, which is going to be fairly ugly, but we can handle it. Since this was the degree 6, these are the coefficients starting with degree 5. So I would be negative y to the 5th plus 2y to the 4th, no y to the 3rd, no y squared, linear factor is plus 3y, constant is minus 4, remainder is plus 8 over y plus 2. Now think about what your long division might look like for a problem like this, and now be happy that we do synthetic division because this would be a big old mess and I wouldn't be able to fit the whole problem on my on my screen and uh, we'd probably make a subtraction mistake somewhere. Speak for yourself, right? Okay, now we're getting to uh, completely factor with the aid of synthetic division. So this would be a case where so far we've only solved problems that have um, uh, uh, x squared so that we can factor them or you can use the quadratic formula or things like that. Um, so notice it says similar to 25 and 26 in your homework. Uh, hint, look at the graph to pick out some possible factors. Now we could probably look at the graph to pick out all the factors, but this isn't always going to be the case. Um, I'm going to pick out a possible factor or zero of negative one. It looks like we have a zero. We have a root of negative one. So a root of negative 1. That's going to mean factor of x plus 1, right? A root of negative 1 or a 0 of negative 1 or an x-intercept of negative 1 means a factor of x plus 1. So I'm going to use that negative 1 and then I'm going to put together I got cubed, I got squared, I got linear, and I got constant, and we're going to separate that off for our remainder. Drop it down, multiply, 
drop, uh, add them up, negative 3, multiply, positive 3, add them up, negative 10, multiply 10, and at this point, negative 10 plus 10 is 0. This should not be surprising because we saw that we had a 0 there, which means that x plus 1 is going to be a factor, which means negative 1 is a 0, and it all comes together, and it's wonderful, and we get... Uh, Remainder of zero means a factor, and it said completely factor. So you cannot forget about this x plus one. This is going to be on your quiz, and I know that when we have a negative one there, we can't forget that x plus one was a factor. And now I'm going to go, this was a cubed, which means this is a squared. x squared minus 3x minus 10. Now we want to completely factor, which means I need to factor... Uh, my quadratic that was my answer there and some of you may recognize right away that this is going to have to be a minus 5 and a positive 2 x squared uh, minus 5x plus 2x gives me my negative 3 minus 5 this is completely factored using the aid of synthetic division and taking a look at the that the, the graph um, negative 1 was here, positive 5 was here, negative 2 was there. So you might be asking now, why do we have to use synthetic division if I could just look at the graph? Because we're not always going to be able to look at the graph, which is going to lead us to um, what, we would, what we're going to take a look at next, which is how do we determine what the possible factors are? Um, before we do that, I'm going to stop here with the synthetic division, but the factor theorem and the remainder theorem really say kind of the same thing. Um, given f of x equals x plus 4 and x minus 3, what is f of 3? Well, we should know that f of 3, if I put a 3 in here, I'm going to get uh, 7 times 0. So clearly f of 3 is equal to 0 because 3 is a 0, x minus 3 is a factor, f of the 0 will always give you 0. So the answer here is 0. So the factor theorem says that if x minus k is a factor, then f of k is equal to 0. So we can plug a value in to see whether or not we get a 0. Um, remainder theorem is very similar. Uh, if x minus 1 is a factor, then from the factor theorem, we know f of 1 has to be equal to 0 because it has a remainder of 0. This, this is going to be, we can figure out what the remainder would be just by plugging a value in. Um, if x minus 1 is not a factor, then f of 1 is going to be the remainder. So we could plug 1 into a function, uh, 2 times 1 to the 4th minus 5 times 1 plus 4 equals 1. So the, this is not a factor, and this would then be the remainder. So you can get the remainder of something just by plugging whatever the corresponding 0 would be with a factor. Um, I know that's a, that's a lot of info, but we'll, we'll take a look further at that as we progress here. Um, so lastly, <clears throat> is the first a factor of the second? If not, what is the remainder? So all we need to do here is calculate, uh, plug in uh, 2, because if this is a factor, then 2, f of 2 will give me 0. So I get 2 times 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 1. Um, so I get 2 times 8 minus 6 plus 1. I think I get 3. So what's the remainder? So it's not a factor and has a remainder of 3. And you know that just by plugging in. Here we put in a negative 3. Put negative 3 in for everything. and calculate. Negative 3 cubed, negative 27, minus 9, minus 6, minus 1. Well, clearly all these negatives are not going to make us uh, uh, be a factor, because I, I would have to get 0 in order to be a factor. So 27, 36, 42, this is negative 43. So again, we're not a factor, and we have a remainder of negative 43, if I did my math right. Um, if I put 3 in here, now I get 3 cubed. Again, I'm x minus 3 being a factor, 3 would be the corresponding 0, and 3 squared, and minus 3, and minus 15. So I get 27 
minus 9 or minus 3 minus 15 equals 27 minus 9 is 18 minus 3 is 15 minus 3. Is, hey, we got a factor. Woohoohoo! Factor. So we have x minus 3 is a factor of uh, the function, whatever, x cubed minus x squared minus x minus 15. Last one. Plug in, uh, whoa, what's going on here? Last one, plug in 2, and you can calculate it up. And uh, we're going to stop there, and we'll talk about the rational root theorem here in the very near future. Thank you.